Hey guys, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. Uh, today I want to give an update on Sam's 81 Daytona 500 pace car. Now it's been a little while. We've done a lot of work with the car off camera. Uh, in the previous videos, we had an issue where compression tests showed 60 PSI compression in the number three cylinder. Uh, using the bore scope down the intake manifold, we did find that the intake valve wasn't sealing. There was actually a small little sliver that wasn't making contact with the valve seat. Um, so the engine ended up coming out. We tore it down. That was in the next video. Uh, found some sketchy kind of stuff going on with the rebuild. Weight welded into the uh, crankshaft, uh, trying to balance it. It was already 30 over. Didn't have a whole lot of miles on the rebuild. In fact, the flat tappet cam and everything was broken in nice and in really good shape. We ended up reusing it. Uh, I did replace the crankshaft with a uh, spare that I had that was in better shape. Um, had every the rotating assembly balanced. Actually, we switched over to a uh, 40 over forged piston then and went through the engine, you know, rebuilt or refreshed or whatever you want to call it. Basically, made everything uh, correct. Uh, got it painted the correct color. Everything's resealed and and uh, all new gaskets, all that. Uh, it has a stage five turbo on it now. It has our two and a half inch exhaust. It has our entire exhaust system on it. It runs phenomenal. Now we did make a few other changes. The uh, carburetor has been modified so that it no longer uses the computer to control the fuel. Um, it is still running timing control through the factory computer, but the carburetor is now a mechanical carburetor running jets. Um, and it runs phenomenal. Now, we did have one other issue with it in the fact that once we got it up and running and driving, there was a few other things to sort out. There were some issues with uh, the brake system that was put on it. It's got a Willwood uh, aftermarket brake system. There was some uh, <laughs> lug nut issues with the stock wheels. Um, it has larger studs on the front than on the back. So somebody put some shanked style uh, lug, uh, like mag wheel lug nuts on it. Uh, and they were bottoming out on the hub. They weren't even tightening the wheel. So we had to make a modification to the lug nuts just to get him by for now. He is changing the wheels to something different uh, once he gets the car. So we got the wheels all tightened up. Things were much better, but I was running out of fuel driving the car and I couldn't understand what was going on. So um, digging into it further, found that it had clogged the new fuel filter that I had uh, after doing a carb rebuild. The fuel pump was actually the, was the uh, fuel pump that came on the engine because it looked pretty much new. And digging in, we did a bore scope down the gas tank to find that something was in the gas tank. I'm not sure exactly what it was. It was some kind of a fine powder. Uh, I'm assuming it was a fine powder. It didn't dissolve in the gasoline. Um, it almost looked like body shop dust, possibly. I know the car was painted, but be kind of hard to put that in there. I don't know if it was like a real fine sand. What what got into it, how it got into it, doesn't matter. It plugged up the fuel filter. Uh, we ended up replacing the gas tank per the customer's uh, request. So a new gas tank, blew out the fuel lines, new fuel pump, another fuel filter in it. Now everything's running great. Car makes 12 pounds of boost, as the customer requested. 12 pounds of boost, water injection. All three lights come on on the hood. Car runs amazing. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over and show you details under the hood, everything about the car a little bit, and just kind of wrapping this one up. So let's check it out. All right, let's take a peek under the hood here, which you can see the fresh paint job and decals. Car looks great. So here we have everything all painted, detailed, well, to a point. Um, we do have uh, EGR delete on it. We have the two and a half inch downpipe. Uh, we did delete the air pump. So when deleting the air pump, we have to go with the two groove water pump pulley uh, to make the belt work for the alternator. We even went as far as cutting off the ear uh, for the air pump that was attached to this uh, cast bracket. It was, it was part of the cast bracket. We trimmed that down. And we also trimmed off the ear on the uh, alternator uh, bracket that was for the air pump to kind of clean it up a little bit that way. Uh, this is our reproduction stainless steel fuel line that goes up to the carb. We have our uh, coolant hose going to the plenum, stage five turbo, ceramic coated exhaust housing, uh, billet wastegate actuator on it. 
which is adjustable. You can actually change the springs in it. Um, this is uh, this one already had a uh, somebody had found an accordion hose or uh, air intake hose that was already on the car, so that was good. It doesn't look like a factory one. It might be a an older replacement, is my guess. Uh, water alcohol injection is on. We also have a cold case aluminum radiator in it. All new hoses, uh, new water pump, aluminum water pump that we sell. Uh, everything's painted factory GM corporate blue. But it actually turned out really nice. Um, we did keep a lot of the, well, we, we have the sensors on here for the map sensor. We're still using part of the computer for the ignition timing. But like I said before, we modified the factory uh, computer controlled carburetor to no longer use the mixture control solenoid on the metering rods. Uh, we actually removed those and went with custom jetting uh, and running the, the carburetor mechanically, sort of like an 80 style, but just no power enrichment valve. Um, but other than that, one of the other interesting things was that we actually found part of the build sheet on top of the gas tank. Uh, not much is readable, some stuff is. Um, we did find out that it was sold new uh, at a dealership in Fargo, North Dakota, which apparently that dealership is still around, but now it's a Ford dealership. But other than that, we're getting ready to ship this one out. Uh, Sam lives out in Las Vegas, Nevada. The car runs great. It actually stays really cool here, but we have cold temps right now. You know, it's in the mid 30s, sometimes closer to 40. And uh, no, I think he's gonna be really happy with it. So another one that turned out really well. But uh, we're going to end the video there, and thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for, for more Turbo Trans Am stuff uh, as we go along.